Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we've got the 2022 Tundra. This one is a limited trim with the TRD off-road package. And as you can see, this is the tow test. So this trailer's not heavy. It's like 5,000 pounds, a little under that 4,700, I think, with a 600 pound tongue weight. And as you can see, not using weight distribution, just a regular ball mount. And Toyota does recommend using weight distribution for anything over 500 pound tongue weight, but I wanted to see how much the trailer would push it around. And if I would have thrown an equalizer on there, it would have just been too stable. So a couple of things real quick to talk about. It has active shutters here. So increases fuel mileage. If it heats up too much, opens those up. If it's uh, getting too hot, or sorry, if it if it's, can close them for fuel mileage, it will close them. On the receiver, Toyota's done a really good job with these chain loops. You see how the oval shape, you can hook the chain up through there and get it on there pretty easy. But look how little space there is on there and here. So I actually had to put this bent pin in the other way. Let's see if I can get this without doing too much damage. And Take this out. So this receiver, you can see, has two walls. There's the inner wall and the outer wall. So that's extra wide, which <clears throat> I have on work trucks before, which are constantly towing, wallowed this hole out, the 5 8 hole, to pretty much 3 quarters or more. And I saw some Ford F-350 prototypes when they first switched to the three inch and they were actually doing a three quarter inch pin on the three inch but having two of these might help with that but it sure does make it hard for this pin that would fit a normal two inch receiver no problem ends up being very tight on this widened two inch receiver I have selected the camper trailer right here and it sets the brake. So one thing that was kind of weird for me is right here is your brake, trailer brake controller. It's not a bad spot except for you can't see it behind the wheel so you got to make sure you know where it is. But then um, I couldn't actually turn it on until I selected some sort of a trailer. But yeah. we're going to do the fuel mileage test. We're going 60 miles. I just filled up and I have reset the fuel mileage right here. We're at zero, haven't started the truck yet. So we're gonna fire it up and go. So right here is the camera button. This one's equipped with all the cameras. So you can see the trailer, you can see it up close. We're in drive, so it's showing the front camera. You can check down the sides, which this one's pretty cool because you can zoom out and see the side of the trailer really well. You can also look in the bed of the truck and then it has the auto one, which tells it where you want it to, or automatically chooses where it thinks it should be when you turn it on. Um, I don't think you can actually turn on this one while you're driving, but I'll give it a shot uh, once we get up to speed a little bit. I don't have the trailer tow mirrors. So this one's not equipped with those. Every single one that they had in Denver when I went to that event for the Tundra did not have the trailer tow mirrors. If you're buying a truck, that can tow 10,000 pounds, buy the trailer tow mirrors, eat that fraction of a mile per gallon that you're gonna lose. But big mirrors are essential. And I mean, this one I'm turned a little bit so you can actually see down the side of the trailer, but uh, yeah, normally you're not gonna be able to see down the sides of the trailer with these standard mirrors if you got a full size uh, camper trailer or travel trailer. Another thing I noticed, the camera's offset so annoying so annoying see that line that should be the center line and it is centered over the coupler so if your trailer's back here it's and you're trying to line it up it just looks funky it doesn't look right when i first was trying to hook up this trailer i hate the cameras that are off center some of them adjust for it fairly well rather than trying to angle it 
have it be offset a little bit and have a straight line going to the center. This is the trailer and truck are perfectly straight right now. And you can see it just looks like the trailer's off to the left. All right, so if we hit the camera button while we're driving, you can get the rear view camera or the cargo view camera, the hitch view, I should say, or the cargo view. <clears throat> so we have a 2017 GMC at work. Obviously, well, it's a 3500, so it's got the big tow mirrors. It's got the cameras out on the very corners of the mirrors and being able to show that view that I showed you earlier that shows us down the sides of the trucks with those mirror cameras it helps a ton while you're driving. You can see down the whole side of the trailer, makes it super clear, super easy to see that, you know, blind spots and whatever. And these mirrors are almost wide enough. I maybe was a little too harsh on them. <clears throat> uh, they're just barely too thin to be able to, or too narrow be able to make it all the way out down the side of the trailer but I can see traffic in the other lane just fine so having those uh, cameras being able to turn them on from the very outside of the mirror would be helpful while you're driving maybe they just don't want you to have too much stuff to worry about but it would be nice to have I'm just going the speed limit here 70 miles an hour uh, this trailer is 4,700 pounds about a 600 pound tongue weight so Toyota recommends using a weight distribution hitch for 500 pounds and more. And I opted not to use the weight distribution hitch for this test because I want to feel how much the trailer pushes the truck around. If I could have put an equalizer hitch on there, it would have just been straight solid. I wouldn't have had to worry about it at all, but I wouldn't have felt anything. I wouldn't have got a, as big of a feel for how stable the truck is. So that's why I opted to use a regular ball mount and I can feel the trailer pushing the truck around a little bit, but it's nothing extreme. There's nothing crazy going on. Um, it's pretty darn stable, nothing scary. This trailer is not super heavy, you know, like I said, 4,700 pounds, but it has a really big wind resistant face. It's just a big flat face on it. And I've towed many trailers that are heavier than this one and gotten better gas mileage with them. Uh, even a fifth wheel camping trailer that weighs nearly, well, more than twice as much, get better gas mileage just because the shape of this trailer is so blunt that it just eats away at your gas mileage. Just wanted to talk a little bit about power and shifting and all that stuff. So, of course, it's been pretty stable through all the, you know, higher speed driving and stuff like that. I could feel the trailer pushing the truck around a little bit at about 70 miles an hour but nothing uncontrollable, nothing that had me worried at all. Uh, it was really quite stable. Uh, here, this is a pretty steep grade. That's showing. Oh, it doesn't give me an actual digital number, but we're probably at 10% grade here, so pretty steep. This is gonna be really short, but it's windy, and I want to talk a little bit about the cameras when we get up to the top of this. Anyway, uh, pretty great driving. Like I, like I said, you can feel the trailer behind it. You can definitely feel it, but even climbing up this, I don't think I've gone over 3,000 RPM. Right now I'm below 25, and it's just going, no problem at all. And that's what it felt like, freeway on-ramps and stuff. I don't think I really went over 3,000 RPM. It was a freeway on-ramp going uphill and actually, I think I did. I hit 3,200 RPM on that one. Uh, initially to try and get up to 60 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour, and it just does it. I'm so really surprised at how well uh, this truck is able to just pull this trailer up the hill. You know, it's really reminiscent of some of those diesels. It just doesn't feel like it's trying hard. You know, those three liter diesels and really doing a great job at this. All right, let's talk through all the cameras again real quick. So we have the front view, and this one's really good. I'll talk more about this later if I haven't already, but uh, this angle on the side is like, it's greater than 180 degrees or close to 180 degrees that you can see. So when you're pulling out into an intersection and it's kind of a blind corner, cars are parked right on the edge or whatever, you can pull up this camera and see oncoming traffic really well. Of course, the rear view camera with the hitch and it's not centered. Let's go ahead, I wanna show you that because that does drive me nuts that 
they put the camera off to the side so when you go to hook up your trailer it doesn't quite line up right so they really should center the camera even if they have the light or whatever they need to make adjustments so the camera is centered to give you a better view of how to hook up the trailer so let's get back to it so if you if you're in park and you hit the camera button it'll do this whole thing and we don't need to watch all that so i'm going to go to neutral i keep hitting the traction control and anyway so we'll go through it so you have when you're off-roading this is the front so you can see the wheel moving just a little bit there those are the front passenger front driver's side wheel looking back and then i already showed you you can zoom to the sides that one's really good for seeing what's behind you when you're back on a trailer in cargo view camera that one's locked the auto and then the off-road camera sets it up all for you you get your uh inclinometer or roll and pitch right here and then you've got the passenger front driver front and the in this case the front view if i'm in reverse it'll switch that to rear view so those camera systems all work really well it's very clear i like it quite a lot so Toyota has done a really good job with the camera systems and of course when you've got this massive widescreen up here I don't necessarily like the layout of the infotainment system I'd love to be able to put the maps on there and you have to be subscribed I'm not I'm not gonna load the app onto my phone and all that stuff because I don't enjoy that kind of stuff so anyway um, I do like the screen it's just the infotainment system's not great unless you are running your phone connected to it so i'm not going to run a zero to 60 with the trailer on because we're doing the fuel mileage test and all that so i do want to show that it can get up and go though like i mean barely over that was 3500 rpm i'm not in a rush the speed limit's only 55 here so yeah i mean it's easy to get up to speed i don't feel like this thing's struggling at all to get up to speed um i'm in tow haul mode and it's probably revving a little bit higher before it shifts to do that because you know a 3500 rpm that's like a i don't know 70 percent eh, 65 70 percent of the throttle of the sorry rpm range on this truck but i'm only about 25 percent on the throttle so there's a lot more throttle to go with all the electronics i don't know how that relates if it's perfectly linear or if it's more aggressive at first which it typically is more aggressive at first but anyway i just feel like there's a ton more for the truck to give and i'm not even close to pushing it to its limits and maybe, so again every time i leave these systems on i end up on a road like this it's good now but it was totally fighting me to get across this line and it, it didn't give up on the first try. It gave up after two or three tries. And I'm towing the trailer, that's super annoying. I should have turned on the camera when I knew the construction zone was coming up just so we could catch that. Uh, hopefully I can get it on the way down. But these blind spot monitors, or not blind spot monitors, the lane keep assist stuff is just great sometimes, I guess. When you if you're paying attention to your driving, then it's more that it gets in the way when you don't want it to. So now we're back to a normal thing. It's got normal lines there and it'll help me. Let's see what it does. Ah, uh, just buzzing that time. It didn't actually move me over. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> I know you guys have heard me complain about this many times before, but I'm just not a big fan of the driver assist stuff because it doesn't do what I want it to do when I want it to do it. And I end up fighting it more than I should have to. We are in the nice level spot right here but we're about to make a climb and i want to show you a dead raccoon on the side of the road no i want to show you how the truck handles going up a hill how the transmission shifts because i really enjoy it i've been in other 10 speeds that i really did not enjoy honestly that i struggled with and in this one it just downshifts to the right gear and goes. There's no trying to figure it out. There's not a ton of shifting. And again, twin turbos at this higher elevation on naturally aspirated engines, I'm probably used to having a lot less power, but with the twin turbo, this thing feels very reminiscent of a diesel, those three liter diesels, as I mentioned, or even the, the uh, Cummins five liter diesel that was in the Titan XD. It just has 
a low end power feel so it doesn't feel like it needs to downshift all that much to get going and here is that climb I was talking about this climb goes all the way up to the top of the dam and we downshifted one gear I don't know what gear we're in to be honest and there goes the second gear so I did have to downshift two times here this spot's really quite steep the level off drop back down and then go up again but uh, it shifts smooth it's easy to do it doesn't have a large delay there's a slight delay in it but not a big delay as it tries to figure out what gear to be in it just kind of goes so some of my qualms with the 10 speed are that you have so many gears it has to shift all the time but in this case it just seems to be doing quite well so here we go construction zone let's see if it pushes us over that white line again might just be so that didn't fight me that much this time I felt the steering wheel vibrate but it didn't try and push me back over the line so I wonder if it did disable the system that tries to force you to drive within a certain area oh there it goes so it, it just pulled me to the left <laughs> tried to push me back into the cones a bit so it, this is a rough one because it's really close to being within the lanes but not quite and so the the trucks there it goes again it the truck just wants to be inside that lane whereas when i'm over here it's like oh there's no lane there and knows not to go over but anyway those uh lane keep assist things and self-driver not self-driving but driver assistance features just always getting in my way all right we are almost halfway so we're at the top of the portion before we turn around and start heading back down 9.5 says the computer i uh, will go ahead and head back down and then we'll fuel up at the bottom and see what the computer says verse what the actual amount of fuel we used is and it's pretty much all downhill from here all right i'm up here at the top it's windy averaging about 9.5 miles per gallon according to the computer over the first 30 miles so the total trip is going to be like 61.7 per google maps we'll see what the truck says but it's doing really well overall exterior temperature is 67 degrees and it is a little bit windy i've got the air conditioner on and stuff like that just automatically set so um we should be kind of an average i mean with the air conditioner off of course you'll get better fuel mileage than what i'm getting but with the air conditioner on that's more realistic it's kind of hard to figure out what to film because there's just no drama it's just going along how you would expect it to that's nice too if you put up the rear view camera versus the rear view mirror all you get is the front of that trailer so we'll leave it on the rear view mirror not that we get much difference oh wind i was thinking that the uh, lane keep assist was getting mad at me again but that was actually the wind coming off this end of the lake and i don't know if you saw right on the corner probably missed it but uh there were kite surfers out there so there's a good amount of wind coming off the lake on this side of it and i can feel it pushing the trailer just a hair but it's nothing crazy so we are going downhill this trailer has so much wind resistance i'm still on the throttle going downhill and that's one issue i do have with this trailer but uh the problem here as well is we're kind of driving into the wind so i'm getting a lot more road noise now even going a little bit slower but downhill into the wind so uphill we had a tailwind it seems like and my fuel mileage is reflecting that we're down to 9.3 and we were at 9.7 at the top of the hill so hopefully things change and it gets a little better but that does make sense i was a little bit surprised that we were getting that good of gas mileage at the top of the hill and it's because we had a tailwind and now we have a headwind i may actually i don't have another trailer set up at the this time so it would be nice to do this test with a flatbed trailer low and heavy that doesn't have much wind resistance so we can really test the engine braking and I did talk with the Toyota guys at the event in Denver and he told me that these are just straight-up turbos there's no special variable geometry or anything like that variable vein whatever they call it so in the light-duty diesels it's hard to phrase that correctly on a commercial scale 
the light duty diesel such as the Cummins 6.7 and the Ram 25 and 3500, the Duramax 25, 3500 and the Ford. F-250, F-350, these are light duty on commercial scale. And they are, they use the turbo variable geometry or variable vane, I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, to kind of close it off and create more back pressure in the engine, adding to the brake effect of the engine. So engine braking and exhaust braking. Obviously, diesels already have a benefit there because they have a much higher compression ratio than gas engines. And then having that variable vane or variable geometry turbo, being able to create more resistance only increases the amount of engine and exhaust braking you get from it. So Toyota's not doing that. They're just straight up turbos. They do have a benefit to that where they're simpler. And the simpler your system is, the less likely you are to have problems. Hopefully that holds true and this maintains great reliability throughout you know hundreds of thousands of miles two three four five hundred thousand miles whatever it may be hopefully toyota can maintain that reputation even with you know adding this much boost pressure in the turbos onto the little 3.4 liter v6 We went 63 miles, of course it's super loud. So I thought it was gonna be closer to 62, but the trip computer on the truck said 63. Oh, that's because we added in a little bit extra. So up to Squaw Peak. Anyway, 63 miles. Uh, technically 63.6. And then we'll see how many gallons of gas it takes. Gasoline doesn't foam up like diesel does, so it's not a big deal, but this is what we did last time. Okay, so 6.8. Just under 10 miles per gallon. 9.35 by the mileage. And the truck is saying 9.6, I believe. 9.7 so let me double check the mileage make sure i included the whole trip um, so i'm just going off the mileage here and i put it in my phone and my phone says 65 miles Jeez. divided by 6.817 so about nine and a half miles per gallon by the actual amount of fuel we used versus the truck saying 9.7, so not too far off. And it was basically 9.6, 9.7, so it's right there on the edge. So it's maybe off by 0.1 of a mile per gallon. Uh, that's acceptable in my opinion, that's not bad at all. And for other trucks I've tested, other half-ton trucks, with the exception of diesels, I mean, they're all in this range anyway so it's not like this thing's that much more fuel efficient when you're towing it's nice having the additional power and all that but i believe with the ram rebel with the hemi v8 it was right there 9.3 9.4 miles per gallon on that same route and the diesel version of the ram rebel i think i was about 12 i'm just ah, that's just off the top of my head i don't know the exact number but so with the diesel it got a little bit better but it still wasn't as good as i expected Trailer backup guide, camper one is selected, continue. Drive straight forward slowly. I don't know what slowly is. Perfectly straight.
step two, stop with trailer straight. Is blue line aligned with the trailer center? Oh, no, it is not. Oh, great. It's never gonna be aligned because you're off center, trailer camera. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna say yes, even though it's not aligned. Now we need to drive forward slowly, making a sharp turn. Okay. We can do that. Continue straight forward slowly to align the trailer. Now it's calibrating. And now it's complete. All right. <clears throat> so the idea here, a few things. Reverse slowly and push for straight path assist. It's definitely not doing the straight path. That was interesting, it's showing me the trailer direction right there. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, shift to reverse to activate. Reverse. Now reverse slowly. It says it's active and reverse slowly and then push for straight path. I just turned it off. Darn it. There we go. Better not make me calibrate all this again. I don't know what it wants me to push. It says push for straight path assist. Ah, this one. There we go. So now, it's turning the wheel on its own. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna get the trailer going around this corner straight where I want it. Okay, so now the trailer's straight where I want it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. And it's going to hopefully make this trailer go straight back from where it is. And I wasn't quite lined up perfectly, but I mean, it's doing this all on its own and it's doing okay, but not perfect. So you can see how misaligned I am now. So it seems like if I'm on too much of an angle, it doesn't do it straight very well. So if I do this again, try and get the trailer straight behind me, and then shift to reverse, activate it here. The steering wheel's already turning. In the demonstration they did, the distance they had us backing up was very short. And it's already, it's leaning off to one side. It is, so it, it misaligned, went off to the one side. It's kind of adjusting, it's coming back this way now, doing this all on its own. I mean, maybe it does better than someone who's new to towing, but for the majority of people, it's probably not gonna be helping that much. So let's try again. We're on an angle here. It's going to try and straighten the trailer from there. And it's doing pretty good. So, I mean, it does okay. Personally, I'm not going to use it. If I were to own a Tundra, I wouldn't really ever use that feature. But for a lot of people, that might be something that's good to have. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures' tow review of this 2022 Tundra 
limited <coughs> trim with the TRD off-road package and just towing this little 5,000 pound trailer here. It did really well. I don't like the assist features. As you know, when I'm driving forward, I don't like the lane keep assist a whole lot. Adaptive cruise control is okay, but in most situations it's not. And the same thing with this trailer backup assist. Uh, I don't like it in the Ford. I don't like it in the Ram. I don't like it here. Uh, they just, they do okay. And they maybe do better than a brand new driver, but anyone who has any experience towing can do better on their own and actually do what they want rather than what the computer wants them to do. Overall, love this truck. It tows great, drives great. Smooth ride, plenty of power. It's a great vehicle. Uh, payload is not great, which the Chevy Traverse I had had 1400 pound payload as does this so the traverse was actually a little bit more this one's exactly 1400 pounds so the funny thing is these half ton trucks really don't have much more payload than anything else than the you know even some sedans are close to that the full-size sedans and the all the crossovers which are station wagons essentially i mean it's got a really smooth ride and the price you pay for that is payload capacity great truck overall if you liked what you saw in the video be sure to hit subscribe ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos comment down below let me know what you want to see if you want to see more towing tests uh different stuff whatever this one we're gonna have a bunch of videos on the towing the off-road and the regular review so again thanks for watching have a great day